Here at Cornerstone Ag, as we're reporting again, harvest uh, 2022. Wheat harvest uh, underway around the state of Kansas. the southern part of the state. Eric Sperber joining us here from Cornerstone Ag. Eric, uh, talking a little bit, you kind of saw the first loads start to trickle in last week, but really now getting going. Yeah, yeah. It was a slow start, combination of weather, and, and it was just marginally ripe. Um, but Monday really kind of broke loose pretty good, and, uh, you know, we... We basically Monday doubled what we had taken in the first five days, and then Tuesday, yesterday, we doubled what we took Monday, and and uh, so we're we're hitting full stride now. Well, let's just talk about it. This has been a a, a unique year and, and not a great year, mm -hmm. uh, weather related uh, for any of the crops, much less the wheat end of things. But we're seeing uh, obviously there's some areas that got a little more rain than others, and mm -hmm. and uh, what are we kind of seeing from the crops so far that's coming in? Well, uh, the wheat that was summer fallow on summer fallow ground is doing remarkably well. Um, 10, 15 bushel better than I ever would have guessed. Um, and I was kind of more optimistic about it than a lot of people uh, going in. But uh, it, it's kind of a testament to the breeders, to the, some of the newer varieties, because I, you, know, you could say we had timely rain, but it was pretty minimal timely rain. Um, Wheat back behind dry land corn uh, suffered. It just it just ran out of water. Yeah. And so as we look at that, let's talk about the other end of the corn or the wheat stuff. How are things looking? I mean, there's a lot going on in the world that's affected uh, the supply chain. Uh, let's talk a little bit about prices and what we're seeing the effect of. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's we've there was a lot of thought in uh, uh, that when Russia invaded Ukraine that we were going to see a lot of incremental business come to the US. Um, we've not seen that happen. Um, in fact, um, you know, we've had some really non-traditional wheat exporters that have really filled in and the, the US has just kind of had the highest priced wheat in the world and, and so um, it's kind of our inelastic buyers that have been there to buy it. Um, supply chain issues, the, the railroads have struggled uh, uh, over the last six months, some of it staffing, some of it uh, just downsized fleets, and, and uh, so, um, you know, we've struggled to get trains in and out of here even when we needed them, um, and so it's, it's been kind of, uh, kind of disruptive and, and challenging, then, then you just throw in the, the, the uh, cost of diesel, the railroads have a fuel surcharge, well, you, you put you put contracts on anticipating that X amount is what you were going to pay in freight and that's up, you know, uh, 10 cents a bushel. Well, that just comes right off the bottom line. Um, so, and, and same thing with trucks. Yeah, it's a tricky time to try to navigate all this and yep. try to make sure everybody uh, uh, gets out with a good profit. The prices are up uh, quite a bit over what we've seen the last several years. Yes, it, you know, we're still looking at historically high uh, prices for, for wheat and, and really for corn and, and uh, uh, still good for milo and soybeans. Well, let's talk a little about, the, you mentioned corn and mm -hmm. milo and soybeans, the fall crops. Uh, uh, again, it was a weird year. It was so dry during the normal planting season that, you know, um, you're joking a little bit, you might see wheat from, from or corn from an inch high to a foot high. Mm -hmm. uh, right now it's been very drug out a little bit. It's going to make for an interesting fall. Yeah, uh, you know, it seems like that always kind of comes together eventually. Um, we just, we're going to need some consistent rain uh, to make it halfway decent fall crop. Um, that's just, we just don't have a profile. Yeah, going to be interesting to see how, hopefully we get the rain. Maybe just wait a couple of days. Here yeah, to get yeah, I, but with the forecast for the temps, uh, I'd say the fall crops, uh, most of them would take a, a couple day break on wheat harvest if we got a nice inch nice. and a half, two inch rain. Uh, that would be very welcome. Take a drink when we can get it, right? Yep. Uh, uh, I guess, uh, you know, how are you guys looking here at Cornerstone Ag as you head into harvest? You, you know, you're talking, you got quite a few trucks starting to come through now. It's picking up and getting into the heat of things. Storage space? or where? We, we have a pretty good space compared to what we've had maybe at some other years. Um, you know, it uh, uh, we're going to have to use some of our space downtown probably as well. Um, going back to the supply deal, we had to... Uh, we had to cancel two trains of Milo that were uh, supposed to go uh, for export, um, but the railroad performance didn't allow that to happen, and, and eventually the buyer had to cancel with us and buy in something else, and, and 
So we were going into harvest with 800,000 bushel of milo that we hadn't anticipated going into harvest with, but I think we're still going to be okay. Well, Eric, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for all you guys do, and uh, look forward to uh, successful harvest. Yeah. Eric Sperber joining us here with Cornerstone Ag.